A mysterious woman sneaks out in the middle of a stormy night to visit a church. With a heart full of sadness, the woman leaves a newborn baby at the church door. Before leaving, the woman tries to convince herself that she has made the right decision, as she has too much to think about the child's future. However, the waifu is comforted by the knowledge that the child is the hope of the world. The story jumps back in time and is set several years after this event. In a futuristic train station, we meet Sai Kudo, an enthusiastic young man visiting the nation's capital for the first time. Obviously, Sai is immediately uncomfortable when he notices the hurried lifestyle of the people of the capital. In fact, just a few seconds later, Sai is overtaken by a waifu running at full speed through the station. However, in the midst of the chaos, Sai stops to help an old woman. Obviously, this makes the old woman a bit uncomfortable, as it's not very normal to run into considerate people at a time like that. As if that wasn't enough, Sai doesn't notice the old woman's discomfort and tries to help her even though the woman insists she doesn't need it. The waifu who had overtaken Sai a few minutes ago suddenly appears and hits the young man violently. After this, it is revealed that the waifu is the granddaughter of the old woman and for that very reason, she believed that Sai was trying to take advantage of her. The waifu introduces herself as Hattori Junko, a student at the Magic Academy. In fact, upon seeing Sai's clothes, the waifu realizes that Sai also belongs to the Academy. However, Sai confesses that he doesn't even know what class he will be going to as it is his first day. The transportation arrives and the youngsters quickly get on as they say goodbye to Hattori's grandmother. The youngsters take advantage of the trip to get to know each other more, so they ask each other all sorts of personal questions. Sai reveals that he is transferred, which surprises the waifu, as the academy has an extremely rigorous and demanding admissions process for transfer students. Although the waifu believes that Sai aspires to become a civil servant, the young man confesses that he wishes to become a high priest, the highest rank to which a human can aspire. The waifu sees Sai's determination, so she decides to support him. After this, the waifu confesses that she comes from a Suhara's family, the ones in charge of serving the country. In addition, Hattori teaches Sai a strange oath to seal his promise. In fact, despite the simplicity of the ritual, Sai understands that the price of breaking the oath is extremely high, so he realizes that the waifu really believes in his dream. Seconds later, the young men arrive at the Magic Academy. Obviously, Sai is stunned to see how huge the place is, so Hattori gives him a quick tour. After this, Sai and Hattori separate momentarily, as Sai must visit the infirmary. Upon arrival, Sai meets Tori, the doctor in charge of checking the health status of each of the incoming students. The waifu explains that Yada, an artificial spirit, is able to instantly diagnose the students. However, Yada not only does this, but is also able to guess the future profession of each of the students. When Sai's time comes, the whole place goes into chaos as Yada reveals that Sai will become the demon king in the future. Obviously, the young man is shocked as he was convinced that he would become high priest. As if that wasn't enough, the waifu confirms that Yada's predictions have never been wrong. Tori reveals that 100 years ago, a man brought the world to the brink of destruction thanks to his uncanny ability to lead demons. Sai tries to explain to the waifu that he has no intention of becoming the demon king, but the waifu is forced to alert the authorities because the students have been traumatized by learning of Sai's presence. After this, Tori takes Sai to the classroom and introduces him to his classmates. Sai notices that Hattori is in the same class, for which he is overjoyed. However, the young student realizes that the waifu is upset with him. Seeing the commotion caused by Yada's prediction, Sai does his best to reverse the situation and rushes to give an emotional speech in front of all his classmates. Although Sai's words manage to move his classmates, the class is in an uproar when one of the students explains that, according to historical records, the original Demon King had given a similar speech 100 years ago. Then Tori announces the student elections. To everyone's surprise, Hiroshi nominates Sai, which irritates Hattori. Sai takes a moment to reflect and rejects the proposal, believing that such a thing could further damage his reputation. In fact, Sai wishes to work in the cleaning department as he believes this will make him appear humble and far from power. However, Tori tells him that the people in charge of cleaning the school are the strangest and most troublesome. Hattori is furious to hear this as she was trying hard to continue believing Sai's words. The waifu challenges Sai and reminds him of the promise they made just a few hours ago. Hattori violently attacks Sai, so the young man has no choice but to clear up the misunderstanding. However, when he tries to calmly explain to the waifu what is going on, Hattori becomes even more enraged as she feels that Sai is trying to flirt with her in front of everyone. The waifu uses all of her strength to attack Sai, which generates a huge shockwave in the place as a strange force protects Sai. As expected, this causes quite a stir in the school. During the night, Sai asks Hiroshi to accompany him to Hattori's room as he wants to apologize to the waifu. Unfortunately for him, Hattori is still angry, so she starts chasing him around the compound. 
After running for a few minutes, Sai encounters a mysterious waifu. Unfortunately for him, the waifu thinks he is in love with her, so he starts fighting Factori. Because of this, things get out of control again and the compound ends up completely destroyed. After this, a strange waifu suddenly appears on the scene and introduces herself as Korone. Korone heals Hattori's wounds quickly using his technological tools as he is literally an android. Hattori regains consciousness and runs away from the scene, which worries Sai greatly. After this, the young man is taken to the principal's office by Tori. In addition, it is revealed that Korone's mission is to follow Sai closely to keep an eye on him. As if that were not enough, the cyber waifu is able to interpret Sai's emotions and intentions. Thanks to this, the director forgives Sai. In fact, the director is extremely kind to the young man despite the fact that Sai will become the enemy of the world in the future. Then Tori asks Sai if he is able to remember what happened. Whereupon the young man begins to explain in detail the power he felt in both situations. Upon hearing Sei's words, the waifu realizes that the young man is not able to control his power properly as he possesses an exaggerated amount of magical energy. After this, Tori gives Sai a magic notebook to communicate telepathically with anyone. At night, Sai does his best to concentrate at bedtime, as Korone doesn't understand the concept of personal space. Fortunately, Korone remembers that humans have passionate feelings so Sai can relax again. However, Sai feels that the waifu is constantly watching him, and when he turns around, his suspicions are confirmed as the waifu is watching him. The next day, Sai makes his best effort to go unnoticed at the academy. However, the young man encounters Fujiko Eito, the dormitory manager. Obviously, Sai is nervous upon seeing her as the waifu is extremely popular and respected at the academy. Fortunately for him, Fujiko treats him very kindly. In fact, the waifu subtly flirts with Sai, which leaves everyone in the place dumbfounded. Later, Sai notices that Hattori has been absent from class, for which he feels guilty. In fact, Kina, the other waifu involved in the previous night's fight, has not attended classes either. This provokes the envy of all of Sei's classmates as the young man literally gained the attention of the most popular waifus at the academy. Sai locks himself in the bathroom to use the magic notebook Tori gave him and to his surprise, it works perfectly. Fujiko happily answers his call, which leaves Sei's classmates, who are literally eavesdropping on their conversation, dumbfounded. Sai asks the waifu for help to reconcile with Hattori, and to the young man's surprise, Fujiko readily agrees. In fact, the waifu instructs Sai to deactivate Korone as they cannot be at peace if Korone keeps a close eye on Sai. Because of this, Sai creates a facade to distract Hiroshi as the young man follows him everywhere and can't get him off his back. Fortunately for Sai, his plan turns out relatively well as Hiroshi believes that Sai wants to be alone with Korone. Obviously, Sai tries to set the record straight, but the rumor runs through the halls of the school before he could say anything. Upon arriving at the meeting place, Korone explains to Sai that no one will bother them since that place is full of monsters. Obviously, the waifu has no idea of Sai's true intentions, so she acts normally. In fact, despite Sai behaving like the strangest human being ever, Korone suspects absolutely nothing. However, Sai's plans are suddenly interrupted as Korone begins to sense a threat on the scene. A wild beast appears and endangers the youngsters. Korone rushes to take a defensive stance, prioritizing Sai's safety. However, the beast smoothly sidesteps the waifu's attack, so Sai ignores Korone's warnings and rushes to take matters into his own hands. To the waifu's surprise, Sai proves that he doesn't have a bit of evil in his heart, as instead of destroying the beast, he decides to turn it into an adorable puppy. After this, the waifu completely ignores that she is an android and is deeply moved by Sai's action, as the young man literally saved her. However, the conversation between the two is suddenly interrupted as the dog discovers Kina, who is camouflaged on the spot. Anyway, Sai seizes the moment and does not hesitate for a second to deactivate Korone using the method Fujiko taught him. Instantly after that, Fujiko appears and explains to Sai that he shouldn't worry about what happens to Korone when he reactivates her, as her memory will be reset. Fujiko assures Sai that she will talk to Hattori, which makes the young man extremely happy. In addition, the waifu suggests that the discipline committee is a great place to improve his reputation, as she knows the problems Sai faces since arriving at the school. Before leaving, Fujiko gives Sai magic medicine, explaining that it is useful for knowing another person's feelings. After this, the waifu leaves the place and Sai takes advantage of the moment to reactivate Korone using the method Fujiko taught her. As the waifu had mentioned, Korone does not remember anything. Fortunately for Sai, Korone finds Kina again. However, Korone feels that Sai's behavior should be judged, so Kina intervenes. Anyway, Kina makes an innocent condition to Sai to be friends. In the evening, Fujiko calls Hattori as promised, 
However, she categorically lies to Hattori telling him that Sai is out of control. Hattori agrees to meet with Sai for the sake of the school, unaware that this is all planned from the shadows by Fujiko. A flashback reveals part of Fujiko's tragic childhood. The only person who genuinely cared about Fujiko was her older brother, which is why they were extremely close. However, to the waifu's misfortune, the Ito family ended the young man's life due to his poor performance in the tasks assigned by the family. Obviously, this completely destroyed Fujiko's mental health, as she is unable to understand the situation. In fact, the girl understood at that very moment that she should become strong to avoid misfortune, as she will have to take responsibility for the family in the future. Again in the present, it is revealed that Fujiko is still carrying out her evil plan to manipulate Sai. In fact, the waifu's plan is so precise that the following scene demonstrates just how far removed Sai is from it all. The young demon king relaxes in the hot springs with Hiroshi, but takes advantage of the situation to learn more in depth about the school's secrets. Hiroshi reveals that there is a mysterious sect of students practicing black magic at the institution. In addition, Hiroshi explains the bad relationship between this sect and Hattori, as the waifu has earned everyone's respect for fighting this evil sect. Upon leaving the hot spring, Sai receives a sudden call from Fujiko. The waifu explains to him that she has managed to arrange a meeting with Hattori, much to Sai's delight. Obviously, he is completely unaware of the waifu's true intentions. Later, on Fujiko's recommendation, Sai gets an interview with the disciplinary committee. To the young man's surprise, the entrance test for the committee is different from what Sai had in mind, as he will literally have to put his magical power to the test. This notoriously draws the young man's attention, as he believes that this will not help his reputation. In fact, it is revealed that Fujiko planned this to unleash fear in the halls of the school. As Mike falls, Sai takes advantage of Sai being distracted and attempts to deactivate her. However, just as he was about to carry out his plan, Kina appears on the scene and interrupts him. Obviously, Sai becomes extremely uncomfortable upon seeing this, as he believes Kina was spying on him. However, he immediately realizes that the waifu has no idea what's going on, as she only went to the place to visit Sai. Anyway, Sai starts to come up with a plan to get rid of Kina, as he doesn't want to be late for the meeting with Hattori. Fortunately for Sai, Kina decides to leave on her own only a moment later, as she thinks Sai wants to be alone with Karone. For the first time, Sai doesn't even bother to explain that he has no physical attraction to androids as he has understood once and for all that everyone sees him as a demon king. Obviously, Sai seizes the moment and doesn't hesitate for a second to deactivate Karone. Without Kina and without Karone, Sai rushes to get to the meeting. Obviously, when he arrives at the place, Sai starts to get nervous, as the place is extremely gloomy. His suspicions are confirmed only a few seconds later, as he receives a surprise ambush. A mysterious group of bullies suddenly appear, and seeing that Sai has been knocked out with a single blow, begin to taunt him. Predictably, however, the bully's laughter turns to fear only seconds later, as Sai was only pretending. Seeing that they are no match for Sai, the bullies reveal that they have taken Hiroshi hostage, Obviously, this doesn't change Sai's determination at all, as he is able to defeat the bullies without endangering Hiroshi's life. Sai defeats the gang in a questionable manner, as he uses inordinate force to subdue them. Obviously, the young men tremble in fear at the sight of Sai's power, as they have never seen such a talented and powerful sorcerer before. Sai defeats the gang in a questionable manner, as he uses inordinate force to subdue them. Obviously, the young men tremble in fear at the sight of Sei's power, as they have never seen such a talented and powerful sorcerer before. After this, the last part of Fujiko's plan is fulfilled as Hattori arrives on the scene at that very moment. Sai does his best to explain the context of the situation to the waifu, but Hattori completely ignores him, believing Sai to be truly evil. In fact, the waifu accuses him of using the Discipline Committee to infiltrate the Academy's spheres of power. The waifu accuses Sai of being a tyrant and makes it clear that she is extremely hurt, as she feels that Sai used her to realize his plans. Seeing that Hattori is completely out of it, Sai decides to use the magic medicines Fujiko gave him. However, he can't find them anywhere. Hattori creates a smoke screen and takes advantage of a moment to flee. However, before leaving the place, he warns Sai that they will have to face each other sooner or later. Sai rushes to take Hiroshi to his room and reactivates Karone to his wounds. After this, Tori meets with Sai to explain that Hattori is gathering all the students to attack him, which puts the young man on alert. The next day, Hattori uses a broadcast alert to summon all the students. When the time comes, Sai encounters a huge army of students, so he asks Hiroshi to get to safety as he will do his best to escape. Although the broadcast alert only lasts for an hour, Sai is completely surrounded and has no choice but to face the army, as he literally has nowhere to flee to. However, Hattori momentarily stops the army, 
as she wants to take it upon herself to finish Sai off with her own hands. Fortunately, Hina appears on the scene at the exact moment and stops Hattori. In fact, Hina not only tries to convince Hattori, but exposes the waifu in front of the entire army by revealing that Hattori is in love with Sai. This infuriates the masses, as they feel that Hattori is joking with them. Paradoxically, Hattori has no choice but to join Sai, as the students are literally beside themselves. However, to say surprise, Karon and Kina make a combined attack to stop the angry mob. Although Sai is terrified at the sight, he realizes almost immediately that the attack is harmless. The place is left overflowing with rice and the students calm down as, unbeknownst to Sai, Kina took the magic medicines. After this, Karon chemically analyzes the medicines and discovers that they are impregnated with control magic, which draws Sai's attention. Days later, things calm down momentarily so Sai can return to classes normally. During PE class, the students must be grouped in pairs of two, and although Sai tries to do the activities with Hiroshi, the young man refuses, so he must find a new partner. Fortunately, Hattori offers to help him, which makes Sai jump for joy, even as all the students ruminate. Hattori realizes that Sai is completely unaware of the universal principles of magic, so he tries to briefly explain to him how to control the flow of mana, but Sai accidentally destroys everything again. This greatly discourages the young demon king as he doesn't want to hurt Atori anymore. Tori explains to Sai that, in order to learn to control his mana flow, he can use the mental self-discipline room. Sai accepts Tori's recommendation, and the next day begins to prepare the necessary equipment to take to the training camp. Obviously, Koron also enlists to accompany him. Despite the fact that she is only a teenager, Fujiko once again proves that she possesses highly confidential information as she is working out a new plan to take advantage of the Mental Self-Discipline Center. In addition, it is revealed that the waifu's brother is still alive thanks to a magic spell. Sai arrives at the Mental Self-Discipline room along with Koron and before entering is warned of a lack of communication inside the place. Sai says goodbye to the waifu and although Sai will literally be 12 hours inside the room, Koron decides to wait for him outside. However, the cyber wife who ends up entering the place to keep him company. In fact, to say surprise, Kina also enters the room without him noticing, as she wanted to bring him something to eat. As expected, Fujiko patiently waits outside the room, as she wants to use illusionary magic bullets to control Sei's mind to make him pledge allegiance. However, the young demon king's training is completely different than expected, as he is not putting even a little effort into improving his concentration. In fact, Sai accidentally finds a map of the school and decides to explore it thoroughly, as it leads to a priceless treasure. Fortunately, Sai comes to his senses and returns to his training. As expected, Sai's training is immediately interrupted as he begins to experience firsthand what it's like to be locked up with two waifus for 12 hours. Kina can't stand the urge to go to the bathroom anymore, so Sai starts looking for help in his magic notebook, but remembers that he is completely cut off from all communication. However, Karong tells him that there is someone outside the room, as she is able to sense his mana. Sai reacts as any of us would react and begins to get nervous. Hearing a tremendous noise inside the room, Fujiko decides to skip her original plan and enters the place as she thinks Sai is completely crazy after being isolated and incommunicado. Obviously, she gets a huge surprise when she sees that things are very different inside the room. Fujiko uses the superpower that women have to avoid explaining themselves and starts interrogating Sai as she sees the map of the school and gets excited. In fact, the waifu takes the map in her hands and leaves the place without giving explanations. Upon returning home, Fujiko begins to question her brother. However, to her surprise, she gets no answer. Fujiko spends the whole night thinking about this. She is even still thinking about it the next day as the spell that keeps her brother alive does not allow her to tell lies. However, a strange waifu interrupts Fujiko's thoughts and makes her uncomfortable, as she is fully aware of her intentions. Fujiko immediately becomes alert, but the waifu quickly leaves the place. After this, Fujiko diverts her attention to the school corridors as someone has scattered copies of the map everywhere. Sai also sees the crowd and gets curious, so viewers over take a closer look at the maps. Obviously, Fujiko immediately starts questioning him. In fact, the news quickly reaches the members of the disciplinary committee. Sai tries to explain to Fujiko that he has nothing to do with what happened, and although the waifu doesn't believe him, she immediately realizes that Sai is telling the truth as she sees Kina pasting maps on the walls. As expected, Fujiko becomes furious and starts questioning Kina, but the waifu innocently replies that she just wants to lure adventurous pirates. Minutes later, Sai begins to see the consequences of this as several students suffer serious injuries while trying to find the treasure. Because of this, the disciplinary committee appoints Sai as spokesman, so the young man is forced to ban the treasure hunt. Quickly, the council president brings Sai to the student assembly. 
The young demon king vehemently announces the new measures, but the students begin to insult him, believing he is lying to them. To everyone's surprise, the green-haired waifu lashes out at Sai, by telling him that he should go look for the treasure himself to see how dangerous the mission is. Hujiko is dumbfounded to see the green-haired waifu again, who introduces herself as Taria. The next day, Sai is sent to the mission by the committee chairwoman. However, before going to the location, Sai is summoned to a meeting by Fujiko. Upon arriving at the meeting, the waifu gives him magic medicines again, arguing that they are useful for controlling the flow of mana. As night falls, Sai prepares with Hiroshi and Korone to go on the mission, but receives a sudden visit from Teruya, who decides to join them. Following the map, the group arrives at some hidden ruins and discovers that the site is littered with tombstones. Everything indicates that the tombstones lie in the place for a very long time and correspond to a battle known as the Great War. Sai follows the indications on the map, so he starts looking for the tombstone of Yamato, who designed the map. Mysteriously, the place seems to have been the scene of a battle recently. However, Sai's suspicions are confirmed almost immediately, as a dark, thick mist puts the group on alert. Meanwhile, Hattori bursts into Kina's room in the middle of the night as he wants to locate Sai. Instead of getting angry, Kina explains to the waifu that Sai is on a dangerous mission along with Hiroshi Korone and a strange green-haired woman. Obviously, Hattori immediately deduces that the green-haired woman Kina is referring to as Teruya, so she decides to leave immediately. On the other hand, the young men are attacked by the mist and are forced to fight. However, Teruya is quickly overpowered, so Sai decides to use the tool Fujiko gave him at the meeting to end the threat. Teruya congratulates Sai as the mist dissipates immediately. In fact, it is revealed that the mist was made up of a gigantic amount of bats. After this, Sai accidentally falls to the ground and discovers Yamato's tombstone, so he rushes to look for clues. Quickly, Sai finds a tape recorder that shows him the way. In fact, the artificial intelligence gives him precise instructions. Meanwhile, Kina bursts into Fujiko's room and asks for her help to save Sai. Fujiko quickly accepts in order to distract Kina, as she fears that the waifu will notice her brother's presence. However, to Fujiko's surprise, Kina heard Fujiko's entire conversation with her brother, but does not judge her at all. On the other hand, Hattori runs at full speed to reach the ruins. Unfortunately, the waifu falls into a mysterious trap. Meanwhile, the group arrives at the destination thanks to the A's directions. After entering the ruins, they find a strange room full of magical armor. Obviously, the armors are not there just to decorate the place. In fact, the young men are forced to fight almost immediately. Fortunately for the others, Sei's magical control has greatly improved thanks to the confrontation he had with the bullies, so he is able to defeat the armors without any problems. After this, Taturiya finds a cell phone on the scene and hands it to Sai. The young man quickly discovers that the cell phone has the necessary directions to find the treasure. Koron begins to search for a stream of water using cutting-edge technology and quickly succeeds. The young men arrive in a subway hot spring. Fujiko and Kina arrive on the scene immediately after that and join the group. Sai. The youngsters find a key on the floor and begin to draw guesses. However, they discover it only a few minutes later. Fujiko activates the key and opens a magic teleportation circle. Upon arrival, they discover outrageous news. The waifus of the committee plan absolutely every obstacle. However, it was all planned to expose C's true intentions as the supposed treasure indicated on the map can only be used by the Demon King. Fujiko quickly slips away and runs to the treasure location, which causes tension to grow in the group. Fujiko rushes to use the key again and opens the treasure place, leaving everyone in the place dumbfounded. To the waifus' surprise, the hidden relic is literally a dragon that belonged to the Demon King. Obviously, the dragon is enraged since they interrupted his nap, so he starts threatening Fujiko since only the Demon King's successor can give him orders. After this, the dragon activates a catalyst and reveals a memory that shocks Fujiko. Unlike what she had been led to believe, her brother was a hero, as he literally gave his life to protect the academy. The dragon channels a large attack, but Sai rushes in to save the waifu, which enrages the dragon. Obviously, after doing something like this, Sai has no choice but to fight the dragon. Fortunately for him, the dragon begins to respect him after this. In fact, the dragon recognizes Sai and is willing to serve him, but only if he recognizes himself as the Demon King. After this, Sai is declared the dragon's master. Days later, Koron receives instructions from the higher-ups to expose Sai. The waifu proposes to seduce the young Demon King as he is extremely clumsy with women. Obviously, the higher-ups authorize Koron to carry out such a strategy. The group moves to the beach to attend classes, since for some reason, the school continues to hold classes by the sea during the summer. Obviously, Koron sees the perfect scenario to carry out his plan, which blushes Sai greatly. 
In fact, the young man begins to remember everything that happened in the last few days, so a flashback sets the story in the past. Sai applied to the summer school well in advance, but Tori rejected his application in order to maintain order among the students. Obviously, this greatly saddened Sai, as fate does not allow him to live like an ordinary teenager. However, to his surprise, Karun gives him a reality check and reminds him that he is literally the luckiest teenager in the world. Sai once again proves that he does not know how to appreciate the gifts of life as he does not understand Karun's intentions. In fact, the waifu proves once again that despite the fact that she is literally an android, she is the perfect waifu, as she managed to get Sai to be able to participate in summer school, on the condition that she constantly takes care of him. However, Sai is honest with the waifu and tells her that he feels little humanity in her when it comes to flirting. Interestingly, Karun acts like a 100% human woman at that moment. The next day, Karun subtly wakes Sai up. The waifu continues to meticulously study Sai's behaviors, but fails to seduce him for obvious reasons. Hearing this, Koron uses the women's secret weapon, offense. Obviously, Koron's foolproof strategy takes effect on Sai, so the young man apologizes to Koron and admits that he is physically attracted to her. Because of this, Sai goes to visit his dragon for advice. However, Sai's plan is foiled again by the waifus as Kina and Koron were literally waiting for him on the spot. After this, Sai again makes it clear that he is unable to enjoy the gifts of life as Koron makes a pass at him in the most literal way possible. Back in the present, Sai meets with Hattori as the waifu is behaving since the youngsters arrive at the beach. As expected, Sai again proves himself to be a simp and apologizes to Hattori. The waifu confesses that she misses spending time with Sai, as he is always busy solving problems. After this, Hina and Hattori hang out having fun on the beach with Sai. As evening falls, the youngsters return to the village to rest. However, the scriptwriters decided to lengthen the episode to give the characters more development. Sai sees Hiroshi walking through the streets and upon greeting him, notices that the young man is discouraged. Hiroshi confesses that he was born and raised in the village, so summer school is like being at home for him. However, Hiroshi explains that there is an ancient legend in the village that prophesies the destruction of the demon king. Upon hearing this, Sai is dumbfounded as he understands that this is the real reason why they wouldn't let him attend summer school in the first place. During the night, Sai begins to feel watched, so he goes out to investigate along with Karon. Meanwhile, at the academy premises, Fujika holds a secret meeting with Sei's dragon and Riri, the committee chairwoman. Riri confesses that she has put aside the interests of the committee and the government as she has begun to sense corruption among the management. In fact, the waifu reveals the plans that the higher-ups are making clear. Hearing that Karon is trying to seduce Sei, Fujika decides to take matters into her own hands even though she does not agree to collaborate with Riri. Meanwhile, Karon is momentarily separated from Sai during the investigation. At that moment, Kina appears on the scene and begins to reveal all the information she got from the meeting between Fujiko and Riri. Obviously, Kina's innocence is again an issue, as the information from the meeting is highly confidential. However, since the waifu is under the effects of Seik, Sai does not make a big deal out of the matter. In fact, Sai gives much more attention to how he feels about Kina since, for some strange reason, he feels that he has known Kina for a long time. In addition to this strange bond, the waifu is extremely sweet to Sai, so Sai begins to believe that the waifu is in love. However, Karon interrupts the tender moment suddenly to give Sai a warning. Unfortunately, the waifu is severely attacked at that very moment. After this, the story switches to the past for a few seconds to reveal that, during the entrance exam, Yeta predicted that Hiroshi would be a hero, which was taken as mockery by Tori. Back in the present, the figure of Karon's attacker is revealed. However, Sai immediately runs to assist the waifu. To her surprise, Karon has not suffered any serious injuries. Nevertheless, the waifu behaves in a very strange and melancholy manner, as if she is about to say goodbye. Obviously, as Sei's social skills are poor, the young man believes that the waifu is just joking. However, Karon starts acting like a human woman would, so Sai begins to take the conversation seriously. Unfortunately for him, it is too late, as the waifu emotionally says goodbye to him. Karon opens a magical portal and leaves the place, which causes Sai great confusion. After this, Kina reveals that Karon was forced by the higher-ups to seduce Sai. Obviously, the waifu got that information from Fujiko. Meanwhile, Hiroshi suffers an existential crisis due to the criticism and ridicule he received throughout his life. The people on the island see him as a loser, as he is the only person on the entire island who cannot swim. As if this were not enough, Hiroshi's father is extremely proud of him, as he fervently believes in Yada's prophecy. In fact, Hiroshi's younger sister also has great admiration for him, but the young man's self-esteem is extremely damaged. The next day, Hiroshi and the rest of the group receive an unexpected visit from Yukiko, Hiroshi's younger sister. 
The girl literally starts interrogating Sai, as she wants to unmask his true identity. Sai denies again and again the accusations of the girl, who accuses Sai of being a demon king. Obviously, the waifu just wants to convince Hiroshi and improve his self-esteem since, if Sai is the demon king of the prophecy, everything Yada said is true. However, Sai makes it clear once again that he has no social skills as he denies the prophecy about Hiroshi. This hurts the Miwa siblings terribly, so Kina runs after them to comfort them. Hattori immediately scolds Sai, which causes great regret in the young man. On the other hand, Kina finds Hiroshi on the shore of a lake. The waifu quickly realizes how much the situation affected Hiroshi, but the young man manages to avoid the awkward conversation. In fact, Hiroshi takes advantage of the situation to explain the legend to Kina, since the entire prophecy takes place in that lake. The young man even reveals that the first ones to talk about the prophecy were his ancestors. The conversation is suddenly interrupted as the young people hear a scream. Immediately after, it is revealed that there is a strange shaman summoning a beast in the lake. Just a few seconds later, the beast awakens and blows everyone's mind as it literally makes the whole place vibrate. The shaman sees Yukiko and quickly runs to finish it off as he witnessed everything. Obviously, Hiroshi tries to stop him, even though it gives him away. The shaman quickly knocks Hiroshi out, which destroys Yukiko's heart as she doesn't give up hope of seeing her brother fulfill the prophecy. Just a few seconds later, the shaman brings the beast to Sei's location as he wants to test him. The shaman introduces himself as Mr. X, which is noticeably catching Sei's attention, as it is clear that Mr. X is the person who has been following him since he arrived on the island. Yukiko explains to Sai everything that happened with Hiroshi, whereupon Sai becomes enraged and begins to violently attack Ms. X. However, Mr. X possesses a strange ability to neutralize magic, so Sai must fight using physical strength. Unfortunately for him, Mr. X is an expert in physical combat. Meanwhile, Hiroshi gives himself up completely to desolation as he has no reason to live. However, remembering Yukiko, the young man feels motivation again, as he does not want to break his hopes. Hiroshi manages to sneak into one of the canals of the lake and discovers a sword stuck in a stone, just as the legend indicated. Hiroshi struggles to convince himself and to his surprise, manages to pull the sword out of the stone. The sword immediately recognizes Hiroshi as the hero, so it grants him its full power. The sword becomes a state-of-the-art artificial intelligence, and thanks to this, Hiroshi gets a state-of-the-art super suit. Meanwhile, Koron arrives just in time to join the battle against Mr. X, which excites everyone in the place. In fact, even Mr. X is surprised as the waifu knows all about him. Koron explains that thanks to a long negotiation with the higher-ups, she managed to become Sei's watcher again even though she failed in her mission to seduce the young man. After explaining this, the waifu rushes to attack Mr. X and makes him tremble with fear, since Koron is not affected at all by Mr. X's ability. On the other hand, Hiroshi uses his new powers to quickly reach the center of the island and in full view of everyone, defeats the beast without any trouble. All the citizens are dumbfounded at the sight of him. Although they don't know that Hiroshi is the one behind the mask of Brave, the legendary hero. After this, Hiroshi goes in search of Mr. X and to everyone's surprise, Sai does not allow him to do so. Instead of showing off, Hiroshi invents an alibi to prevent them from discovering that he is Brave. A flashback reveals that Kina and Sai knew each other in their childhood, although they remember it. They were both abandoned in the same church and grew up living in the orphan community. In fact, the accessory the waifu wears in her hair was a gift from Sai. This is confirmed seconds later as, in the present, Sai and Kina realize that they had a similar childhood. Sai confesses to the waifu that he doesn't know his date of birth, so he celebrates his birthday on December 25 since that was the day he was abandoned at the church. The waifu confesses that she also grew up in a church, so Sai begins to suspect that Kina is the girl he used to spend time with during his childhood. However, the waifu denies this as she doesn't remember anything similar. On the other hand, Fujiko proves once again that she is always one step ahead of the others as she has deduced that what happened on the beach had side effects. The waifu's theory is correct and as she explains in her conversation with the dragon, new monsters have appeared. In fact, Fujiko's theory is confirmed just a few seconds later as Sai and Hiroshi see on TV that the city is filling up with monsters. Obviously, Hiroshi is secretly fighting said monsters. After this, Sai recalls that he literally entered the academy with the dream of becoming a high priest as he wishes to improve the world. However, these words sadden Hiroshi as the Demon King said the exact same words 100 years ago, and if Sai becomes the Demon King, he must stop him. Hours later, Sai finds Kina eating lunch during class time and begins to interrogate her, as the waifu literally misses every class. Obviously, before Sai notices, Kina escapes the situation by making herself invisible and leaves Sai talking to himself. Because of this, when Kina tries to approach Sai as if nothing happened, a young man ignores her, 
as he wants to negotiate with her. In fact, Sai tells the waifu that she must attend classes if she wants to keep the friendship. Obviously, as it always happens, Sai's plans have the opposite effect to what he wants, so he ends up provoking jealousy and insecurities in Hattori. In fact, the matter gets out of Sai's hands as he fails to realize Hattori's feelings. The young demon king asks the blue-haired waifu for advice, but the latter just leaves the place quietly, trying to make it clear that she is bothered by the bond Sai has with Kina. On the other hand, it is revealed that Fujiko is conducting new experiments with the monsters. In fact, she has obtained an egg to tame the beast. However, Kina takes the egg away without Fujiko noticing. The waifu tries to cook the egg, but Sai avoids it, as he sees something strange about it. Her suspicions are immediately confirmed, as the egg reacts to Sai's magic. In just a few seconds, the egg increases in size tremendously and starts to worry everyone. As if that wasn't enough, the egg hatches and gives birth to a gigantic beast. The group prepares to fight the beast, but Fujiko appears on the scene at that very moment to explain that she is able to control the beast. However, to the waifu's dismay, the beast does not listen to her at all. In fact, the beast violently attacks the waifu, so Hiroshi has no choice but to use the eye to take care of the beast. Fortunately, the young man is able to defeat the monster without any problems. As if the praise, applause, and recognition weren't enough, Hiroshi fulfills his life's dream, kissing the world's most famous idol, as the waifu is very grateful to him. The next day, things go back to normal, so Kina seizes the moment and promises Sai that she will go back to class, but only if he commits to go to her birthday. Although Sai doesn't know when the waifu's birthday is for sure, he accepts the deal. Meanwhile, Koron explains to Hattori that she will have to schedule an interview to arrange her marriage to Sai. Obviously, this leaves the waifu dumbfounded. In fact, the waifu's anxiety goes through the roof, so she immediately starts rehearsing what she will say at the meeting. Fortunately for her, Koron decides to give her some advice. However, as expected, the cyber waifu's advice is inhuman. Despite this, Koron gives the necessary moral support to the waifu, so Hattori approaches Sai to invite him to the meeting. Fortunately for her, Hiroshi is also on site, so the waifu seizes the moment and invites him to the meeting to informalize the encounter. In fact, Hattori immediately realizes that it is a great opportunity to improve the atmosphere during the meeting, so she even invites Koron, who is going to go anyway, since he must follow Sai everywhere. Hours later at sunset, Sai sees a strange meeting between one of the school's directors and the leader of a strange sorcerer known to lead an evil organization. Obviously, the meeting is held publicly on purpose for Sai to witness. In fact, the men make a clear message to Sai. The monsters that are appearing in the surrounding area are after him. Days later, the young men travel to attend the diplomatic meeting with Hattori's parents. As expected, the journey is extremely uncomfortable for the waifu as she must be alone with Sai for a long time, and as if that were not enough, she must tell them the true purpose of the meeting. Koron tries to help her, but the waifu refuses as Koron is not able to understand her feelings. Fortunately for her, Sai seems to understand the situation perfectly. After a long journey, the group arrives in Iganasado, Hattori's hometown. As soon as they set foot outside the train, they are greeted by Yuko, Hattori's younger sister. To Giroshi's surprise and joy, Yuko is none other than Hoshino Yuri, the idol he saved a few days ago. Obviously, Hattori blushes profusely at the sight of his sister, as he fears that she will realize who Sai is. Then, as the group walks to Hattori's house, Yuko confesses that she is able to sense that Sai is the demon king as she was bitten by a monster when she was little and because of that, she is able to sense the darkness that dwells within others. After a long day, Sai meets Hattori's father, who immediately begins questioning him. Although the man's questions are uncomfortable, Sai answers them calmly and makes it clear that he is certain about his feelings for Hattori. However, although this is enough to convince and cheer Hattori's father, Sai is ambiguous in his answers as he is confused. In the evening, Sai is treated to a big party hosted by Hattori's family and friends. However, the waifu is just as confused as Sai, as she believes that he is not fully aware of what is going on. Because of this, Hattori plucks up the courage and visits Sei's room in the middle of the night. Obviously, the young man is dumbfounded to see the waifu's attitude as Hattori has never done anything similar before. However, the waifu needs to clear her doubts about it, so she starts to seduce Sai slightly. Unfortunately, the young demon king once again proves that he doesn't know how to appreciate the gifts of life as he believes Hattori is just following his family's orders. Logically, the waifu begins to cry upon hearing Sei's words as her feelings for him were true. Sai understands absolutely nothing of what is happening, but the waifu leaves the place in tears. After this, the family members appear on the scene and begin to accuse him of being a traitor, as they believe that Sai used Hattori for political reasons. Fortunately for him, 
Teruya suddenly appears on the scene and lures Hattori's relatives into a trap. In fact, Teruya explains that she is also interested in him, as the Demon King is a valuable resource that all ninja families wish to possess. However, if Sai makes it clear again that he doesn't want to lose his V-card just yet, and sends another waifu to the friend zone. This makes Teruya furious, so the waifu reveals the Machiavellian plan she is carrying out together with her minions. At this point, a parallel scene shows that Kina is in danger, as Teruya's father is the priestly leader of the sect that serves the pagan god Suhara. The waifu reveals that for some reason, Suhara ordered the sect to sacrifice Kina. Sai freaks out upon hearing this and tries to act immediately. However, as he begins to channel his attack, Yuko appears on the scene and quickly stops him. Seeing this, Teruya decides to leave the scene immediately. Yuko begins to scold Sai, and although the young man's fate is dark and uncertain, the waifu worries about what Sai did to Hattori. However, Koron interrupts the moment and begins to reprimand Sai, as she is obliged to comply with Suhara's decisions by order of the government. The atmosphere becomes extremely tense as Koron is ready to destroy Sai despite everything she feels for him. Fortunately for Sai, Koron makes it clear once again that she is the better waifu and allows herself to be deactivated on purpose, as she was only pretending so as not to arouse suspicion. Before leaving the place, Sai realizes that Yuko possesses Dark Man in her body as the energy has started to react to the presence of the Demon King. Meanwhile, Hina is captured by the Dark Cult members. Fortunately, she is saved just in time by the strange blonde-haired man who appeared a few scenes earlier. Before they are defeated, the pagan priests realize that the blonde man is none other than Yamato. After this, Sai arrives on the scene and thanks Yamato for what he did for Kina. However, Yamana quickly reveals that he saved Kina under his own self-interest, as the waifu is too valuable a tool to fight against spirit beings. Obviously, the atmosphere is immediately filled with tension, as Yamato had been operating from the shadows for years and his whole plan is being carried out. Fujiko suddenly appears on the scene and joins the battle to help Sai. In fact, the waifu is accompanied by the dark beasts that have appeared in the surroundings, as she has managed to tame them. Meanwhile, Teruya is reunited with her father, who is in agony from the wounds inflicted by Yamato. The waifu begins to lament her father's condition, but knows full well that she must take her priestly leadership role from now on. After this, a strange member of Yamato's organization named Tuv appears and the waifu is put on alert. On the other hand, Hattori meets with her father for a similar reason. The waifu learns what happened to Teruya's father and is terrified to think that Sai was behind it all. Hattori's grandmother appears at that very moment and gives her an ancestral sword that has belonged to the family for many generations, as the waifu is destined for great things. However, the old woman makes it clear that the waifu must do what she feels is right, and that she must ignore everything morally right since, according to her, the gods will never understand the feelings of humans. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, the fate of humanity continues to be debated between Sai and Yamato. Unfortunately for Sai, Yamato's power level is vastly superior to that of all the students at the academy. However, Fujiko arrives on the scene at that precise moment and uses one of the beasts to save Sai from the tragic situation. Fujiko and Kina run at full speed to get Sai to safety, but as expected, Yamato immediately starts chasing them, as he knows that Sai is capable of healing his wounds so he doesn't want to give her the time to do that. Obviously, the waifus rush the pace to try to escape, but to their surprise, they run into the director, who intercepts Yamato. However, when the group leaves the battlefield, they encounter Riri. The waifu doesn't hesitate for a second to warn Sai of what she will do to him if he dares to harm humanity. Despite the fact that Sai has explained time and time again that he has no ill intentions, the waifu does not let go of the prejudice she has towards him. However, the fate of humanity is still being debated on another battlefield. Hattori and Teria have gathered all the clan's ninja to carry out the final fight between the two clans. Hattori is extremely worried about her sister, as the dark energy inside the waifu is steadily growing. Hiroshi suddenly bursts onto the battlefield to warn Yuko of the dangers surrounding her. The waifu deeply appreciates this, but Hiroshi's concern does not change. Stai goes down to the academy's subway to meet Peterhausen, his faithful dragon. To Peterhausen's surprise and delight, Sai's plans are even more ambitious than the original Demon King's plans as Sai intends to destroy God. While this is going on, the director and Yamato prepare for their fight. Sai and Peterhausen suddenly appear on the surface and begin to spread terror among the inhabitants. Obviously, Sai completely ignores the innocents and quickly heads for the battlefield. Hattori, however, takes advantage of the fact that his companions are distracted and launches an attack. As expected, Hattori's attack is useless against Sai was literally absorbed an insane amount of Peterhausen's power. 
The waifu blushes as she sees that Sai hasn't changed one bit. In fact, Sai is very kind to her and apologizes for not understanding her feelings. After this, Sai pulls the waifu to safety and continues on his way. However, to his surprise, Brave appears on the scene at that very moment and starts attacking Peterhausen. Instead of being alarmed, the dragon becomes even more excited as he is unable to sense mana in Brave. Obviously, this is because Brave's strength is technological, not magical. Meanwhile, Hattori and Yuko infiltrate the academy to defeat the monsters serving the Demon King, but unfortunately for them, they encounter a strange and disgusting being named Rubbers. Fortunately, they receive the help of two ninjas, but Rubbers is on another level. In fact, it is revealed that Rubbers is under the orders of Teruya and his henchmen. On the other hand, Sai decides to end the fight with Brave since, much more than a physical confrontation, the battle has turned philosophical. Peter Hausen opens his jaws and puts Brave in a tragic situation. The hero knows he is about to meet his end as not only is he about to be devoured by the dragon, but he literally sees Peter Hausen channeling a lethal sphere of magical energy. However, the AI tells Brave that he can use the demon anti-king mode to save himself and, thanks to this, he successfully escapes. At that moment, a huge military ship arrives on the scene and restores hope to the humans. The ship's codename is Black Crane and it was designed exclusively to fight the demon king. The ship begins to attack ferociously almost immediately, but Peterhausen discovers that the ship possesses a magical energy core, so he rushes to counterattack. After successfully encircling the ship, Peterhausen manages to connect a lethal blow to the ship's engine. However, to the ship's cabin's surprise, one of the pilots is a magic dummy controlled by 2V. In fact, 2V is controlling everything from the shadows, as he wishes to carry out a catastrophe using the ship, and to everyone's surprise, his plan is successful. Seeing this, Hiroshi worries for Sei's integrity and goes to look for him immediately since, despite fate pitting them against each other, Hiroshi considers him a friend. However, upon arriving at the scene, he encounters Yamato and the principal. Hiroshi quickly realizes that the director is in danger and rushes to help him, but the old man warns him that Yamato is too powerful. In fact, the old man begs Hiroshi to leave the place, but the young man refuses and decides to fight. Unfortunately for him, his suit is deactivated at that very moment, revealing that Yamato was the one who created the AI behind Brave. Anyway, Hiroshi manages to convince Yamato to leave him alive as he can be useful in defeating Sai, since only he is able to use the suit. Meanwhile, Fujiko and Kina begin to be chased by the invincible creature that attacked Hattori earlier, so they go on alert. Unfortunately for Teruya, Ruri suddenly bursts onto the battlefield and reveals that Teruya's father lost his life at the hands of the waifu, which creates chaos on the scene, as Teruya had led everyone to believe that his father lost his life at the hands of Sei. Obviously, the waifu orders Riri's arrest, so the ninjas prepare to attack her. Fortunately for her, her companions arrive on the scene just in time and join the battle. In addition, it is revealed that the waifus have organized to help Fujiko protect Kina. In fact, Fujiko encounters Yamato during the fight and is greatly alarmed, as his presence is terrifying. As if that wasn't enough, Yamato is able to put Kina into a trance, which leaves everyone in shock as Kina behaves completely differently. As expected, Yamato eludes the waifus without any problem and takes Kina in his arms. Fujiko tries to stop him, but Yamato teleports away and takes Kina to another location. Meanwhile, Riri and Hattori find themselves on the battlefield once and for all. The waifu's interests are completely opposite, so a confrontation is inevitable. In fact, Hattori does not hesitate for a second to confront the waifu by telling her that he will send all of his troops if necessary. Obviously, Riri is aware of this and decides to confront Hattori's troops. However, 2V intervenes using his magic puppets and defeats Hattori's troops. After this, Hattori has no choice but to take care of Riri with his own hands. Unfortunately, the waifu is at a great numerical disadvantage, so she is quickly subdued. To everyone's surprise, Teruya suddenly appears on the scene and reveals that he has taken Yuko hostage. On the other hand, it is revealed that Fujiko managed to break free from Rubber's oppressive and oppressive pursuit thanks to a clever strategy. Fortunately for Hattori and Yuko, Brave arrives on the scene just in time and brings his beloved waifu to safety. Anyway, it is quickly revealed that Brave is only on the spot to save Yuko, as he is being extorted by Yamato and has no choice but to leave the place immediately after saving Yuko. After this, 2V takes Teruya out of the place to get her to safety and prepares to fight the Waifus. Fortunately, Fujiko arrives on the scene at that very moment and puts 2V in an unfavorable situation. However, when Riri lethally attacks 2V, she realizes that 2V was just controlling another puppet. To everyone's surprise, Sai is reborn from the ashes at that very moment, revealing that he did not lose his life during the fall of the military ship. 
Stai immediately understands the situation and decides to go help his friends, even though the entire city has literally turned into chaos. In fact, Sai confesses that his powers are extremely limited due to the enormous amount of energy he expended to survive the ship's impact. Seeing this, Riri decides to step aside, which leaves everyone in shock as the Waifu had promised to stop Sai. However, Sai still has one more hurdle to overcome, as Teruya and Hattori have yet to be held accountable. The Waifu are in charge of leading the most powerful ninja tribes in the world, so they cannot let Sai escape. To everyone's surprise, Atori uses the clan's legendary sword to challenge Teruya, making her feelings for Sai clear. The waifu confesses her feelings for Sai and begins to attack Teruya's troops, proving that she is the one chosen to wield the legendary sword. Hattori easily defeats Teruya's troops and buys enough time for Sai to escape from the scene. After this, it is revealed that Teruya's father is still alive, which leaves the waifu in shock. However, Sai must clear one last hurdle before having the final battle against Yamato. Brave intercepts Sai to warn him about the deal he made with Yamato. However, Hiroshi knows perfectly well that there is no way to make Sai back down, so he has no choice but to confront him physically. In fact, Sai's determination is far greater than Hiroshi's understanding, so he begins to feel fearful of what might happen to him. To Hiroshi's surprise, Sai launches into the attack in a haphazard and improvised manner, which leaves the young hero in shock as the brave system is capable of disintegrating Sai easily. However, Hiroshi almost immediately understands Sai's decision, as the two have forged an extremely deep bond of friendship. Sai purposely allowed himself to be severely wounded so that Hiroshi could understand that his intentions are not evil. Hiroshi's suit suffers an electrical overload and both young men begin to fall precipitously towards the void, so Sai decides to destroy a part of the suit to protect Hiroshi from the impact. Sai pulls Hiroshi to safety and takes him to Yuko, so the waifu can see once and for all who the heroes who have saved her so many times. Hiroshi blushes at the sight of Yuko, as he believes the waifu only respected him for being brave. However, as expected, Yuko is moved to see that Hiroshi was the hero who saved her and many other people. Although every anime lover expected a kiss between Yuko and Hiroshi at this moment, Yuko's evil mark reacts to Sei's presence, so the tender moment is suddenly interrupted. Sai makes Hiroshi understand that he cannot remove Yuko's mark without causing irreversible damage but also reveals that he will be able to remove it when he defeats the god Suhara. After this, Sai leaves the place and goes in search of Yamato. Meanwhile, Yamato takes Kina to the ritual site and after making his way through the security guards, makes preparations to begin the ceremony. Yamato places Kina on the ground and gives the necessary orders for the mechanism called Singularity to activate. At that moment, Yamato is dumbfounded to see a space-time portal open in front of his eyes. Kina demonstrates her divine nature by seamlessly flowing into the divine dimension, so she begins to read Yamato's past. A flashback reveals that Yamato lives more than 100 years ago and has been trapped in space-time because he tried to change his and his family's destiny. Yamato's daughter also possessed divine nature, just like Kina, so Yamato has spent his entire life trying to get her back. Kina immediately empathizes with Yamato and tries to help him, but the waifu knows there is nothing she can do about it. And although she tries to explain, Yamato completely ignores her, as he has spent his whole life waiting for this moment. Sai arrives on the scene at that very moment and confronts Yamato verbally. Obviously, Yamato knew this was going to happen, so he immediately begins to attack. However, to everyone's surprise, the final fight is extremely brief as Sai uses a clever strategy to humiliate Yamato and defeat him in one move. Sai uses a mana replica and brings the battle to an end. At that moment, the system's defense mechanism is activated, so Suhara begins to evacuate the place to avoid being destroyed. Obviously, this is not enough to stop Sai. The young demon king knows that he cannot change the world without defeating Suhara, so he calls Peterhausen. Yamato interrogates Sai, as he wants to know the motivation behind his dreams. Obviously, Sai explains to him that he does not want to be part of a world ruled by a corrupt god as a kind god who would never create a demon king. Sai chases Sukhara at full speed and upon entering, discovers that the entire interior of the system is a space-time portal. Obviously, the place is full of sentries, so Peterhausen must escort Sai to the core. As expected, Peterhausen absorbs a great deal of damage to save Sai, so they both manage to enter the core. Peterhausen synchronizes with Sukhara and manages to summon a black hole. Kina arrives on the scene at that precise moment and, upon seeing what is happening, begins to cry inconsolably as she knows that her friends are about to be disintegrated. However, Peter Hausen promises Kina that Sai will survive. In fact, the dragon gives one of his teeth to the waifu as a reminder. After this, the group completely destroys Suhara and completely changes the fate of the timeline. Unfortunately, Peter Hausen is destroyed along with Suhara, 
as he synchronized with the system to save his friends. Sai is reunited with the rest of the group and quickly realizes that only a few remember everything that has happened, so he notices that Kina altered everyone's memories. Obviously, the waifu did this so that Sai could live without having to worry about fate. 